Hi, Andrew here. Today I would like to teach you how to find the zeros and give the multiplicity of each zero of the following function x times, yeah, this thing and times that thing. Okay, so the first thing is what we have to do to find the zeros, all right? In other words, the x-intercepts. Uh, we have to have this function in fully factored form. Now we don't have it in fully factored form. We can factor this and we can factor this, all right? So let's start there. Now, why do we have to factor in order to find the zeros or the x-intercepts? I went through a lot of detail on that in uh, some of the videos, actually, I think 20 of them or so, in this playlist here, Graphs of Polynomial Functions on our channel. Check out the ones where I'm finding the x-intercepts, all right? I go through excruciating detail on every one of them. This one I'm going to run through a little faster. So what I have to do is I have to factor this on out, all right? Uh, and I want to find the uh, binomials, okay, that comprise this quadratic. So basically, you know that it's going to be, so what I'll do is I'll put this in brackets. So we're going to have a binomial here and another binomial there, plus or minus sign, right? And it separates the, the terms, right? A, B, C, and D, whatever you want to call them. So now, whenever you have a, uh, I can't factor anything out here, right? Because 4 and 12 and 9 don't have anything in common in terms of whole numbers. So what I'm kind of left to do is I, I have to... Uh, figure out now just how to factor this. And the way we're going to do that is by square rooting, okay, the, the leading term here. So square root the 4, that leaves us with a 2. Square root the x squared, that's going to leave us with x. So basically, this is going to be the leading term of both binomials. In other words, 2x will be placed in both of these positions, 2x, okay? And now we have to think of two numbers that multiply uh, to equal positive 9. Now, it turns out there's four such whole numbers, right? It's going to be positive 9 and a positive 1, negative 9, and a negative 1, uh, you're also going to get then a positive 3. Let me make that a little neater. Positive 3 and a positive 3. And a negative 3 and a negative 3. Now, one of these four combinations is going to be the right values uh, that we should plug in. Okay? Now, the question is, well, which one should it be? Now, I know that you might say, oh, the ones that add up to negative 12. Well, not exactly, right? None of this is going to add up to negative 12. Okay? None of these combinations will. So there's something else going on. So what we want to focus on is the terms must add up to be negative. And there's no way that if all the factors are positive here, right, if, all, if, if they're positive values, that that's ever going to be adding up to something negative. So you kind of have a 50-50. All right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose this set of factors. All right? The negative 3 and the negative 3. So, and I'm going to see how it works out. If it works, then I'm good. And if it doesn't work, then these would be my factors, and I guarantee it will work, okay? So I would just now double-check this. So what I would do is I would take 2x times 2x, meaning I would foil it and see if I can come up with this. So 2x times 2x is going to be the 4x cubed. 2x times negative 3 is going to be negative 6x. Negative 3 times 2x is going to be negative 6x. And then your negative 3 times negative 3 is going to be your, be your positive 9. When you combine these terms, you're going to get negative 12x, and oh, looky here, there it is. Again, if that didn't come out right, all I would have done is I would have just then chosen the negative 9 and the negative 1, and it, and it would have worked, okay? Now, over here, this one's a lot easier. Since this leading coefficient is a 1, we don't really, we can easily uh, think this one through, okay? So, you have your binomials, right? Two numbers that multiply to 16, but that, they, that then are going to add to 8. What are they? That's just 4 and 4, right? If x is, if... 4 and 4 are going to multiply to positive 16 and add to positive 8. So those are our factors, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, so I can highlight this a little better, I'm going to combine each of these now, all right, uh, and write them in exponential form. In other words, so since these both are the same, I can write something like this, 2x minus 3 squared, and then this whole thing is going to be x plus 4 squared. Now, the reason why I'm going to do that is because these powers of each of these factors, we really have three factors, uh, are going to provide the multiplicity, okay? It's that simple then. So I'll come back to that, though. Uh, but right here now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set each of these terms equal to zero. The reason why is because that's how we find the zeros or find the x-intercepts. And there is an explanation, though, behind that. Check out the video. All right, check out those videos. So we have x equal to zero. That's one. So then we're going to take our 2x minus 3 squared. You don't even need the squared there, technically. You could just take whatever inside, because when 
when you set this equal to zero, you square root that side and square root that side. The square goes away and you're still left with zero because square root of zero is zero. So you really don't need that. You can kind of save yourself a little bit of time. And then similarly, just take the x plus four and equal that to zero. So as you can already see, x is equal to zero. Well, that's already solved, right? Add the three on over for this one. You're gonna get then two x is equal to three. Divide the two out on both sides and then you're gonna get x is equal to three halves or aka 1.5. All right, so that's another zero value. And then here the math is nice and simple. Just subtract four on both sides and x is gonna be equal to negative four. So we should have now three zeros for the function, okay? In other words, the function will now touch or intersect the x-axis at three locations, okay? And it's these three locations. Now what we do is we give the multiplicity of each, okay? Now to do that, remember I was highlighting the powers. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in my power of one here so remember, for this factor of x, remember we, we said that the, the value of x there is going to be 0. So I can say that its multiplicity is equal to 1. It's just equal to the power. Then for the 2x minus 3, remember we solved that and got the 0 value of 3 halves. So whatever its power is, which is 2, will equal its multiplicity of 2. Okay. Similarly, the x to the x plus 4 factor, right? We solved that for x and it was minus 4 and the multiplicity of that will be equal to now 2. And that's all it is. I mean, th those are your answers, all right? Now it turns out that the multiplicities don't mean something in terms of the behaviors of the function. So if you want to get a little visual understanding, just plot your function here. Go x and this, this is going to be 4x squared minus 12x, all right, plus 9. Close the parentheses, open the parentheses. Then it's just x squared plus 8x plus then 16. Close it. So just uh, I'm just going to double check, make sure everything looks pretty good. And let's go to zoom and I'll go to number six for zoom standard. Okay. Now this because I'm uh, let me I'm going to change the window here a little bit. Hopefully I'll zoom. Hopefully I'll be able to get enough. So let's go x min of negative five, x max of just one. And that should probably be good. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah, didn't really didn't really give me the detail I wanted. But okay, so let's go. I don't know what it's like being a little funky here. Oh, well, I had to go to X2. Sorry, that was a silly mistake. There we go. Okay. All right, so now here. I got three locations, right, where the function uh, touches or crosses. One location here, remember, that's the X to the equals negative four, right? One, two, three, four. And whenever you get a bump, right, whenever the function touches and then goes back to where it came from, go back to where you came from, right? It's going to be an even multiplicity. So that's what we had here, right? It said multiplicity was two, so that's even. Then whenever the function crosses, actually starts low and ends high, it actually goes straight through the x-axis, we should expect that to be an odd multiplicity. And that was x equals zero. So look, the multiplicity was odd. And then here we get a go back to where you came from. All right, so we got an even multiplicity at, and that looks right around, if that's one and that's two, that's basically X is equal to one half, uh, <laughs> 1.5 or three halves, right? And uh, look, an even multiplicity. Now, why do even and odd multiplicities produce such behavior? I got a video on that. All right, check out the link in the description below. I explain it in a lot of detail. And if you want to understand why it happens, check it out. I highly suggest it. Um, it'll make this make a whole lot more sense. And then if the problems change on you, guess what? If you understand why it's, you know, how it's happening, why it's happening, you're going to do well on the test, right? You won't, you won't have an issue. And it's not only just the test, but it just helps you in terms of understanding things around you in terms of problem solving, uh, you know, and that's what we try to do. We try to provide as much help as physically possible on individual type of questions. Because at the end of the day, what are you going to see on your test? Individual type of questions. So we try to teach the concept through questions. All right. So hopefully you like it. And if you like this, by the way, we got physics and chemistry out there. We got a whole lot of other stuff coming. We got like 4,500. I, I don't even know how many videos. All right. Thousands of them. So check us out. All right. We'd love to help you with more. And I'll see you soon.